Are you ready to enter a world of magic, mystery, and questionable morality? Look no further than The Owl House, a journey through the boiling aisles with Luz, Ida, and King, and discover what this animated gem has to say about identity, acceptance, and the perils of making deals with demonic entities. With such a loyal fan base, it's no surprise that The Owl House has spawned all sorts of fan theories. But which of these theories hold the most weight? I'm Caleb with Wicked Binge, and these are the Owl House Fan Theories BS to Truth Bombs. Let's start with our first category. These theories either have so many holes that they can't possibly be true, they lack evidence, or they've been confirmed false by the creators. These theories are BS. Fallows killed Luz's father. The theory proposed by Reddit user Fantastic Year 9607 is certainly a tantalizing one, suggesting that Emperor Fallows is the one responsible for Luz's father's death. The user suggests that time pools would which allows someone to see the future could have given Ballows knowledge that Luz would help him. The theory also states that after Luz's father died, Camilla helped Luz embrace her uniqueness, which eventually led her to the Boiling Isles and to meet Ballows. The reveal that Ballows killed Luz's father could be a shocking moment for both Luz and Camilla, and this might be why the writers sent Camilla to the demon realm in the show. This would be a major plot twist that could have a significant impact on the show's narrative. But let's pump the brakes a bit and examine this theory more closely. Firstly, there is no evidence to support this theory. While Balos is certainly shown to be a ruthless leader who is willing to do whatever it takes to achieve his goals, there is no indication that he had any personal vendetta against Luz's father or her family. I mean, we can't just go around accusing people of murder without any proof, can we? Also, based on the information provided in Luz's diary entries, it's more than likely that Manny died due to a pre-existing medical condition such as a heart problem or cancer. The fact that the family moved to be closer to a hospital suggests that Manny had ongoing health issues that required medical attention. Secondly, this theory undermines the depth and complexity of Luz's character development. Luz's backstory and trauma are an integral part of her character, and attributing her motivation solely to Balos's actions would over simplify her arc and rob her of agency. It's not fair to reduce Luz to just a victim of circumstance. She's much more than that. But perhaps the biggest issue with this theory is that it's not a healthy way to cope with trauma. Blaming an all-powerful scapegoat is not the solution to overcoming one's struggles. It would be a cheap narrative device to attribute all of Luz's challenges and motivations to a single villain, rather than allowing her to confront and overcome her obstacles on her own terms. So, while this theory may be intriguing, it ultimately falls apart upon closer examination. The Owl House is a show that values complex character development and nuanced storytelling, and we can trust the writers to handle Luz's backstory in a way that respects both of these values. As follows, this theory is just complete BS. Moving on from the BS, these theories still have a lot of problems not enough to say they're completely debunked, but still. These theories are full of holes. Amity dyes her hair to accept herself. First, we have a theory suggested by Reddit user Yoda2820 suggesting that Amity's partially dyed hair in the Owl House is symbolic of her dissatisfaction with herself, and that the show will end with a scene where her hair is fully grown out to its natural color, indicating that she has found inner peace and acceptance. While while this may seem like an interesting interpretation, it is full of holes and lacks any significant evidence to support it. For one, although Amity does have dyed hair in the show, there is no obvious connection between this and her self-doubt or feeling of dissatisfaction with her identity. The show hasn't delved into this aspect of her character, so it's only guesswork to assume that her hair color was intentionally chosen to represent her inner turmoil. Furthermore, in 
movies and TV shows, changing a character's hair color to represent their personal growth or acceptance is common, but an overused idea. Given that the show in question has a unique and sophisticated way of telling stories, it's unlikely that they would use such a predictable approach to show Amity's emotional journey. Mom always liked it green. Moreover, it's important to mention that hair growth and dyeing are natural occurrences that don't have any direct link to personal growth or acceptance. Amity's hair may be growing out on its own, or she may have chosen to dye it back to its natural color for practical or stylistic reasons that have nothing to do with her character development. It's important to remember that not every aspect of a character's appearance is a deliberate choice meant to convey a deeper meaning, and that relying on cliche symbolism can be a sign of lazy writing. Luz will become the next empress. The theory by Reddit user Total Supreme suggests that Luz could become an empress by the end of the season and lead Boiling Island to a better future. While it's an interesting idea, there are several flaws with this theory that make it unlikely to happen. Firstly, Luz is very young and not yet an adult, which would make it difficult for her to lead a society as complex and diverse as the Boiling Isles. Additionally, the Boiling Isles has a history of bad experiences with emperors and empresses, especially after what happened with Balos. It's doubtful that they would want another human ruler, especially one who is so inexperienced. Furthermore, Luz's journey on the Boiling Isles has been one of self-discovery and personal growth, and it's unclear if she has any interest in becoming a ruler. It seems more likely that she would want to continue exploring magic and learning more about the Boiling Isles rather than taking on the responsibilities of leading it. Are you sure you want to give this power to me? Instead of Luz becoming an empress, it's possible that this series could explore the idea of establishing some kind of government or council to rule the Boiling Isles. This could involve a collaboration between witches, demons, and other magical creatures to create a fair and just society. However, it's important to note that the show has not yet hinted at any such development, so this is purely speculative. With that said, we're now into the middle category. Where where we may stumble onto some truth, maybe. These theories are possible. The Collector is not evil. The theory proposed by Reddit user AstronomerSari1022 suggests that the Collector, a powerful childlike being, is not actually evil, but simply lacks supervision and guidance. The theory predicts that the Collector will play a significant role in the show, potentially taking over the main character's role and forcing the other characters into specific roles. The theory suggests that no one can defeat the Collector except perhaps for King, who may have the power Power to do so. Alternatively, the gang may call upon a more powerful cosmic entity, such as the Collector's parents or another star child, to deal with the Collector. The theory predicts that this would tie into the show's theme of parent-child relationships. One of the key pieces of evidence to support the theory that the Collector is not inherently evil is the fact that he is a childlike being. Children are often seen as innocent and in need of guidance and supervision to help them make the right choices. Wanna be my grudge me buddies? The Collector may simply lack the knowledge and understanding necessary to make good decisions and may act out of impulse rather than malice. This could explain why he is so obsessed with collecting things and why he seems to have little regard for the well-being of others. Another piece of evidence to support the theory is the fact that the Collector has not yet been portrayed as a villain in the show. While he has certainly caused some trouble for the characters, he has not yet shown any overtly malicious behavior. This could indicate that the show's creators are intentionally keeping his true nature a mystery, perhaps because they have plans to reveal that he is not actually evil. Finally, the idea of calling upon a more powerful cosmic entity to deal with the Collector is not necessarily far-fetched. The Owl House universe is full of magic and mystical beings, so it's not out of the realm of possibility that there could be another powerful 
entity out there that could help the characters in their fight against the Collector. Additionally, the theme of parent-child relationships is a major theme in the show, and it would make sense for the creators to explore this theme by having the Collector's parents play a role in the story. Overall, while the theory proposed by the Reddit user is still speculative, there are several pieces of evidence to support it. Balos is alive. The theory suggested by Reddit user AstronomerSorry1022 suggests that Balos is still alive and will be desperate to return to the Boiling Isles to finish the job and get a new body. In his current state, he is unable to do anything, so he will get a helper, and the theory proposes that it could be Jacob Hopkins, the lunatic from yesterday's lies. The theory suggests that Balos will use Hopkins to start a cult and continue his plans to rule the Boiling Isles. I needed a sacrifice. This theory makes sense because we know that Balos is a powerful and determined character who will stop at nothing to achieve his goals. Additionally, we have seen him use others to achieve his goals in the past, such as with his use of Lilith to capture Ida. Moreover, the character of Jacob Hopkins seems like a ripe candidate for manipulation, given his amoral nature and willingness to do whatever it takes to get what he wants. Balos could easily exploit these traits to turn him into a loyal follower. These next conspiracies make a lot of sense. In fact, we think they're more likely to be true than not. These theories are probable. Everyone in Boiling Isles was once a human. The Boiling Isles has been a mysterious and enchanting setting in the Owl House. However, a recent fan theory proposed by Reddit user Jochi Cat has shed some light on a possible connection between the magical realm and Earth. This theory suggests that ancient humans might have discovered the Boiling Isles and gradually adapted to its unique climate, evolving into the witches and other supernatural beings that lose encounters. Several elements in the Owl House series support this theory. One such element is the use of Titan blood to travel between dimensions. This substance, derived from the being that the Boiling Isles are built around, was once more abundant and used for its potent magical properties. Pools of Titan blood can even transport humans between worlds, hinting at a possible link between Earth and the Boiling Isles. Another factor is the use of glyph magic, a pure form of magic that loses masters and teaches to other witches. These glyphs, linked to the elements of the world, are believed to have originated from Emperor Balos' journals, another human who may have traveled to the Boiling Isles in the distant past. Together, these elements suggest that humans and witches may share a common ancestor. While this theory is speculative, it draws from established elements in the Owl House series to offer a compelling possibility. Over time, ancient humans from Earth may have found their way to the Boiling Isles and accessed its magic, leading to their adaptation and eventual divergence into witches and other supernatural beings. Emperor Balos' influence may have further distanced the witches from their abilities, making them even more distinct from humans. This fan theory adds depth and complexity to the Owl House's world and characters. It invites viewers to consider the history and evolution of both worlds and and raises intriguing questions about identity and belonging. While it remains unconfirmed, this theory is a fascinating and plausible addition to the Owl House lore. But real quick, before we get to our last entry, if you're enjoying this video, do us a huge favor and hit that subscribe button and notification bell. We ask because we'd really appreciate the help getting to our next milestone, and we have lots more videos we'd love to share with you. Thanks so much. Finally, we've reached the truth, confirmed truth. People have blown the whistle on these theories with such compelling evidence that they must be true. These theories are the truth bombs. Luz's ancestors were witches. The theory that Luz is a descendant of one of the ancient witches who founded the Boiling Isles has been suggested by Reddit user Dogegod. The supporting points for this theory include Luz's immediate fascination with magic, her unusually strong magical abilities, her mysterious connection to the portal, and Emperor Balos' interest in her. Luz's fascination with magic from the first episode suggests that she has a natural connection to it, possibly inherited from her witch ancestor. Additionally, 
personally, Luz's strong magical abilities, despite being new to the Boiling Isles, could be evidence of her natural talent for magic, passed down through her lineage. Luz's surname is Nocida, which has Spanish origins and means nightshade. Nightshade is a plant commonly associated with witches and magic. It's possible that this surname was chosen intentionally by the show's creators to hint at Luz's witchy heritage. In the episode, Hootie's Moving Hassle, we see a portrait of a witch named Ida the Owl Lady from over a century ago. The portrait bears a striking resemblance to Luz, which could suggest that Luz is descended from Ida or another witch from that time period. In this series, Luz is shown to be very talented in magic, especially in the episode Wing It Like Witches. She can do a spell that needs expert knowledge of abomination anatomy, even though she never learned it before. This kind of ability is is rare even for skilled witches. Some people believe that Luz might have inherited this natural talent from her ancestor. In the episode Agony of a Witch, we learn that Ida has a curse that caused her to turn into a monstrous owl creature every full moon. This curse was placed on her by a group of witches who were jealous of her power. It's possible that Luz's ancestor might have been one of these powerful witches who made others jealous, and this caused them to curse her and her family. In Young Blood, Old Souls, it is revealed that Luz's presence is necessary for the portal to open. This suggests that there is something special about her that makes her important to the history of the Boiling Isles. It's possible that her ancestral connection to the Boiling Isles is the reason for this. Finally, Emperor Balos's fascination with Luz is very strange. He knows about her family background and thinks that she can unleash the full power of the portal. Some people believe he might have bad intentions and wants to manipulate Luz, or maybe he sees her as a risk to his power. Overall, many people think Luz might be a descendant of one of the ancient witches who created the Boiling Isles, and there's a lot of proof to back it up. This theory adds a lot of depth to Luz's character and could have big effects on the show going forward. But let us know in the comments section which of these theories you think are the biggest truth bombs. Make sure you hit that notification bell and binge our other videos. But most importantly, stay wicked.